Hey everybody, Courtney here from the Office of Student Involvement. I am so excited uh, to have with me today Nia and Morris uh, uh, from the Homage exhibit talking about an upcoming event that we are going to have at DePaul. So um, if you haven't heard yet, on Monday, February 21st, we're bringing the Homage exhibit. Uh, and I'm going to turn it over to Nia and Morris here real quick to tell you a little bit about what the exhibit in includes. So Nia and Morris, take it away. We are so excited to be visiting DePaul. Yes. Uh, the Image exhibit, it's a private collection of documents and artifacts uh, owned by my husband and myself. And so we travel the country um, visiting colleges and universities, bringing history up close and personal. Uh, so all of the items are going to be original artifacts and documents. So there are no copies or duplicates or anything like that. Everything is going to be a period piece. But we have documents from the era of slavery all the way to current day. That's great. Out of personal curiosity, why did you all start collecting? Oh, um, to shorten the story, uh, my husband and I were both involved with Barack Obama's first campaign for president. And I was having a conversation with my grandmother who you know, she was sending boxes of newspapers and uh, just anything, fundraising letters, uh, magazines. And I had this conversation and she's like, you have to understand, you have to document the work you're doing. In 30 years, whoever owns that artifact, be, you know, they're able to craft the story relating to it. And so that's when I started to um, really collect with purpose. Uh, and then we got married and the collection has grown to include artwork um, as well as artifacts. That's amazing. I, I did not know that story. And I, that just makes me even more excited. And I, I, I think the, that in tandem with your willingness to share the, share this with college students around the country is just so powerful. So I, I'm curious, Nia Morris, if, if you can share a, a sneak peek of some of the pieces that our students are going to be able to see here at DePaul. Awesome. Yes, definitely. Okay. Um, Hold on. I don't know if you okay. can see this here. Yes. This would be, um, can you see it? Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to make you a little bit bigger for everybody. <laughs> this is a slave collar. Now, if you look at it, um, we have a few collars that are in part of our um, collection. Uh, but this one here, as you look, it identifies and we go around uh, the individual's neck. And actually has a, um, as you can see, a lock portion here in order to keep. Um, this would probably be used more on those that are identified to be potential uh, runaway risk. Uh, as you can see here, it actually has bells to it as well. So it could not only from sight of seeing someone with this and let you know that may be uh, someone's property or that is someone's property, but also from the bells, it gives a clear warning that um, there is a reason why um, this was placed there. So this is, it, it, as my wife was saying, we only deal with the authentic pieces. We were able to obtain this and, and we were delighted um, when we were, when we were um, uh, successful in obtaining a piece like this. Um, but um, what I'd like, just like to say is, is that this obviously will be uh, something that's part of the uh, beginning stages of our exhibits. So if you look in and see this and go through the different stages and different parts, it really brings probably... Um, it brings it, everything full circle. Exactly. Of the full experience when it comes to um, African people and their... Um, Enslavement in the States. And experience within the States in America. Yeah. Um, and we have, like I said, we have documents, era of slavery, going through reconstruction, post-reconstruction, civil rights, post-civil rights to current. Um, and it really gives you a timeline and allows you to see history in a way that's not always taught in schools. Um, we were able to pull for the DePaul show a few items that are specific to the Midwest and specific to um, Chicago. So um, we do talk a lot about the history of the Chicago Defender, how that ties into Pullman Porters, um, 
and the bigger story of um, masses of people moving from the south up north. The Great north. Migration. Yes, yes, the Great Migration. I pulled for you today, this is actually um, from the Chronicle. This is a press photo. Press photos are one of my favorite things to collect. Um, and this is from August 7th, and this is 1966. On the back, you'll see that this is uh, highlighting riots in Chicago with the stamp of the newspaper there. And we know um, Chicago, its history in redlining, um, where African-Americans weren't allowed to rent and or own homes in certain areas. And this civil rights march from August 7th um, is highlighting that. So you have a picture, um, you have two groups of people. Uh, on one side, you have African-Americans, on the other side, you have uh, Caucasian um, residents and what this is doing, what they're doing um, is protesting uh, redlining and uh, marching for integration of housing in mm -hmm. Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, the next thing that I have, this is actually one of my favorite pieces from the exhibit. It's a Dixie labor agency. It's a advertisement for um, a staffing agency. And what they say um, is that colored help is their specialty. So they're looking for maids, porters, drivers. Um, and this is coming out of St. Louis, Missouri. And this is actually in 19, hold on, 1926. What makes this piece interesting, um, let me see, opposite, is that we have in the collection the responses to this ad as well. And so what you're seeing are the Black women who are responding to this call for colored help. And so we know, um, we can only imagine what colored help means and what the um, working conditions and pay uh, were for this um, agency, again, located in the mid Midwest, right in your backyard. So if we have time, we have a few more. If not, we can definitely invite everybody to come down uh, and see the exhibit in person, uh, but it will be amazing. It will be engaging. Uh, and we're excited. Yeah. I, you know, even just seeing these three pieces, I am even more excited to see this. I, I really appreciate uh, your attention to pulling pieces from the Midwest and the city of Chicago. A lot mm -hmm. of our DePaul students take classes about and learn about the city of Chicago. And my, the one that I get to participate with for first year students in particular has talked about how the history of redlining is still still shows up through our uh, communities and the impact that that had that started, you know, a couple decades ago, but not too long ago, but right. how it still impacts Chicagoans and how we lay out the city between North side, South side transportation. So I, I am, I was excited before I'm even more excited now. Awesome. Um, so Nia Morris, thank you so much for taking this time today to share a little bit with our students about homage. Um, students, mark your calendars. It's going to be Monday, February 21st. It's going to be from 11 to 5, uh, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the Lincoln Park Student Center, room 120AB. It's right on the first floor there uh, at the entryway. Uh, we've got more details. There's a poster in the atrium if you want to hear, hear more about it or read more about it. Um, we've got posts on our social media as well. Um, but we really look forward to seeing uh, the exhibit. Uh, Nia and Morris, thank you for taking the time today to join us. Um, and to Paul students, we will uh, see you on the 21st. Um, if you're really excited and you want to learn about homage before before the ex exhibit gets here, check it out on Instagram. You can go to at homage exhibit um, to learn a little more. But we will see you all on the 24th, 4th, or 21st. Bye-bye, uh, Blue Demons. Bye-bye.